So I wondered if you had any expectations coming into this hearing and how they matched up with what actually happened. Uh, I actually thought that there might be more of a partisan tone, and even though clearly the um, minority is uh, oppositional, um, they, they were not as strident as I expected. Um, I think it was a good opportunity for the district to put forth in a national venue uh, the plight, the fact that there are 700,000 citizens who don't have full citizenship. Do you leave the room any more optimistic that D.C. statehood can continue to move forward? Yes, uh, I do leave the room feeling more optimistic. Uh, we've, we have felt that the chances of this bill passing in the House are good, but of course the hearing is an opportunity for things to go better or worse, and I think they went better. So, Chair, there were clearly, though, some, some arguments constitutionally about the bones of this. Up until now, it's been kind of statehood or nothing. Is there an avenue that you would pursue for representation that does not include traditional statehood? Uh, statehood is the proposal that's before us. Statehood is the best approach, uh, and there is no reason why we would look at another approach. There were some questions brought up about the Constitution. I've been around long enough to know that folks can read the Constitution differently. And the fact that somebody says the Constitution doesn't permit such and such, in this case, wouldn't permit statehood, doesn't mean that they're right. It's pretty clear that the prevailing argument is that uh, H.R. 51, the bill, the statehood bill, um, would work. There's a considerable amount of legal opinion saying that it would work. And the fact that somebody is saying, well, I read it differently, doesn't mean that they have the better argument. They don't. My last one. What did you make of the repeated references to Councilman Evans in this hearing, which was supposed to be about D.C. State? I think the constant references were an effort at a distraction. And there were some procedural moves at the very beginning that I think were designed, I mean, they, they involved Mr. Evans, but they seemed to be designed to stop the hearing. So I, I, I look at it that way. So, so Chairman, you know, you were not a, probably a council member 25 years ago or whatever the last time this came up, but you were certainly involved. You well, were a there staffer. Was a, there was a hearing in the Senate about five years ago. Oh, really? And okay. I well, testified there. Okay, well, we're talking about the one they were talking about previously. Yes. D.C. was in a lot better position to ask for statehood this time, weren't they? Than, yes. I mean, last time, wasn't what, the city in the yes. midst of a crisis? And well, yes. The, 25 years ago, the city was not doing so well financially. But the argument I made today is that how well the city is doing should not be determinative of whether citizens have full citizenship rights. But it has something uh, to do we're with We're doing it. better than other states. We're doing better than, very much better than some states. They shouldn't lose statehood because of it. Nobody's suggesting that. We should get statehood regardless of whether we're doing well. But we are doing well. We've taken that issue off the table. Do you think that D.C. will have to put forth any sort of concessions if they want this bill to be taken up in the Senate and, and dealt with? Well, there's going to have to be negotiation around a transition plan. There are a lot of issues, there are a lot of details that you get into the nitty-gritty, get into the weeds uh, that have nothing to do with citizenship, but do have to do with an admission act. And uh, there'll be some give and take there. Give us the sure, this, is the, this is the biggest push in 25 years. It's uh, great. Wh why do it now? Why put all this profile and high-profile effort into it now when the Republicans control the Senate and the White House, which basically makes it you know, extremely unlikely, as many people mentioned and acknowledged, that it's actually going to happen. Why, why, you know, use up all your gunpowder now? Well, I don't think we're using up all of our gunpowder. I think that this has been a, a long struggle, and uh, it will continue to be a struggle uh, if the Senate doesn't pass it. Um, I think this is an important step, and it's it, it's not a better strategy for us to say, well, hold off, we'll, we'll wait. Uh, if this gets to the House, uh, there'll be pressure on the Senate. If it doesn't get to the Senate, it'll get reintroduced. Uh, we keep pushing for this. We're in a better place today than we were 25 years ago or even five years ago. Um, that's not a reason why we shouldn't have pushed 25 years ago. So I, I, don't, I don't see any legitimacy in a strategy of waiting. But you're going to have to have a situation where, given the current politics, you've got Democrats controlling the Congress and the White House before it happens, right? 
Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm not realistically. Gonna, I'm not going to sit here and say, "Oh, my my reading of the tea leaves is this going to get to the Senate and pass immediately?" That's not my reading of the tea leaves. But it is my belief that the momentum we're seeing is momentum that needs to keep building, as it has been for the last decade. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you Thank all you very much. much. Just a, no, I, uh, what are your I, thoughts? Uh, well, this was a great day. I had my turn uh, about six years ago when the Senate took up the bill. It was great to see the House do it. We've got the votes to pass it. Our witnesses were eloquent, but what really touched me this morning was when I got here and I saw lines and lines of D.C. residents uh, lining the halls, uh, making their presence felt. Uh, pictures from folks standing outside watching it on video. Uh, this is a united community in support of our equality. This is a time where we see momentum really rising, and uh, what's going to be different this time is that we have the votes in the House to pass this bill for the first time. Do you time. think there's any votes to get it past that point? Um, in this Congress, maybe not, but the votes that are going to get this passed are out in the 50 states when we elect a new Senate uh, and uh, hopefully a new president. That's, that's what's going to get this thing ultimately passed. But this is an extremely important first step and a, a very significant day. You were around again uh, 25 years ago when this, this got started. Um, the city was not in as good a position financially. In fact, it was falling to pieces. So does that help, the fact that they're in better shape? Well, I think it does. Um, it certainly takes away the argument that we're not capable of governing ourselves as a state, that we don't have the financial uh, ability to. I think there were some legitimate questions about our, our economy at that time, but the truth is we're no longer dependent on the federal government. We've got a growing tech sector. Uh, the things that made a state economy strong a hundred years ago, uh, agriculture, heavy industry, are what makes an economy strong in the 21st century. And for those economic forces, D.C. is well positioned with a tech infrastructure that uh, is going to carry us into the next century. That's why our economy is growing. That's why we're one of the most economically stable jurisdictions in the United States and, and frankly, one of the, the, the best run. Thank you. I, I just want to add one thing. I was on the committee that drew those lines uh, and the question of the hotel uh, was hotly debated. And I, I think the best way to say it is we'll put the monuments in the federal district and we'll keep the emoluments uh, outside. Mayor, uh, Congressman, how do you think that went? Uh, I thought it went. I, I, I expected it to be a tough hearing. It wasn't as tough as I thought. Uh, and what was really important is that uh, the answers of the mayor, the council chair, and our other witnesses were so to the point that I think it may have thrown some of my co Republican colleagues off in terms of what kinds of questions to ask. So we expected the questions we got, and we didn't get any question unless the mayor did that we did not anticipate. Mayor, some of these attacks by the opponents is talking about parking, talking about all sorts of things going back to 1995, financial troubles. Were you expecting a little more than that substantially? Were you surprised at the level of argument? That I wish I could say that I was surprised that uh, it was suggested that the parking rights of staffers should supersede the rights of 702,000 people to re be represented in this Congress. I thought that was a, a shameful statement. But we were prepared to answer any all, in all questions that this Congress had. We are proud of the state of the District of Columbia, and we know uh, that we are ready uh, to assume all the responsibilities that go with being the 51st state. How would you characterize, Mayor, the arguments that are being used by the Republicans against state building, the Jack Evans issue, the constitutional issues? Well, they're old, um, and they have been dispelled. Uh, and what we are left with are partisan concerns. And so what I have asked, uh, what I asked in, in my testimony is that all of the members of Congress uh, really live up to their oath of office and ensure that all taxpaying Americans have equal protection under the law. Do you both leave this hearing now more optimistic about the potential for D.C. state I, I leave it more optimistic because uh, of the number of co-sponsors. It takes 218 uh, members to pass this bill. The reason I'm predicting that it will pass is we have more than 218 as I speak. Congresswoman, last time this came up, we were talking about 25 years ago, you were pushing this bill 
for a city that was in financial trouble. Does the fact that the city's no longer in financial trouble help you? Uh, it does, although at the time that I first introduced this bill, when I first came to Congress, the city was not in financial trouble. It subsequently got into financial trouble, but it has bounced b back in the most uh, extraordinary way. It's one of the top ten cities in growth. It's got more than $2 billion surplus. And the mayor, and speaking for the city, is prepared to spend some of that, that surplus in taking back uh, these state functions. One of the things mayor? they said, Mayor, that I thought was interesting, they said, well, you got all this money, but, you know, the federal government pays for your prisons, they pay for this, they pay for that. Uh, obviously, there is a financial, let's say, burden <laughs> or a, a cost, if you will. Um, but we also think that it's a tremendous benefit. In addition to getting the rights that we're due as taxpaying Americans, having control over our criminal justice system allows us to better have um, accountability for public safety decisions. I pointed out to one of the members uh, that I control just a piece of the criminal justice system in the District of Columbia, the police and the human services the agencies that support our residents, and they control everything else, the prosecutors, the courts, and the supervising agencies. So a sovereign people, um, one of the biggest jobs of the chief executive is to ensure safety, but we don't have control of our entire system. Mayor, you're making a big push, making a very big push right now for statehood. What do you get out of this given that Republican control of the Senate and the White House, and it's very clear that they're not going to go along with it? So the great thing about our democracy is that we have elections regularly. Um, and I promised the people of the District of Columbia that we were always going to be in the position to be ready uh, when the political uh, wins aligned with each other. And we are going to argue for, to keep control of the House in our elections next year, to get control of the Senate, and to get the White House. But I don't let the Republicans off the hook. This, for us, is not a Democratic or Republican issue. It's an American issue. And so getting a vote uh, in the House uh, gets us halfway there. So do you believe the only thing that will take to get it taken up in the Senate is a Democratic majority in the Senate? I defer to the Congresswoman. Yeah, we can't, I, we can't tell you how Democrats who haven't even been elected yet will vote. I can tell you this, that uh, two-thirds of the Democrats in the Senate have already become co-sponsors. Often people vote who aren't co-sponsors. The Senate is always more difficult because they represent a broader slice of, of the public. But we have no doubt that we can get the Senate as well. Uh, we also are very, very cheered by how many uh, of the Senate seats are in play. We think this is a good time for this bill to have come forward, both for the House and the Senate. So it sounds like you're basically saying, Last if one. you get a Democratic administration, this may go through, and that's well what you're waiting for. Uh, we, 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 what we're saying is, is this. The way in which uh, bills move is one House at a time. Uh, I think getting this bill through the House is more than halfway there. Mm. So we got that in the bank. Uh, and look what we, we face over here. We have not been able to get anything. I mean, why don't you ask, why can't you get things passed over here? It's because uh, the Senate doesn't want to pass anything. But that's one of the reasons why so many Senate seats are in play. When you have the House doing its work in, in such an extraordinary way, with guns, for example, coming up again, and they're quaking on guns, uh, from guns to perhaps the most urgent issue in the Congress or in the world today, climate change, and nothing happening in the Senate, we think this gives us a very important opportunity because of those issues leave alone D.C. statehood. Do you suspect you'll be able to get that full House vote before the end of the year? Last question, guys. Last question. I do. I do expect that the full House vote, the, the, that the uh, H.R. 51 will be voted this Congress, that's the 216th Congress, and that it will pass this Congress in the House. And that's what I'm saying is more than halfway home. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.